The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everyone, and welcome to our webinar this week. My name is Tanya, and I'm the Marketing Manager over here at Strexoft Solutions. Just for those of you who are new with us today, our star solution MWF or Metal Wood Framer is our automated rivet wall, floor, ceiling, and truss framing software for light gauge steel and also wood modeling. Today's webinar will be short but sweet. Our technical services manager, Marilyn, will be walking you through how to set up and model subassemblies throughout your wall module, including the subassembly catalog box, where subassembly options are located throughout the wall module, how to place subassemblies throughout your wall panels, and much more. So just before we get going, I'd like to remind everyone to feel free to type in questions into the questions tab of the GoToWebinar dashboard. We'll make sure to answer them by email within 24 hours if we run out of time at the end of this session. All right, that's it for me. I'm gonna hand off to Marilyn now. Hello, everyone. So today, like Tanya was saying, we're gonna go over subassemblies. So the first thing that we're gonna go over is the subassembly catalog. That is going to be located under the settings, subassembly catalogs. So out of the box, we give you two types of subassemblies. We give you the default. The default would be, you know, a generic built up, let's say stud packs. And we also have a system subassembly, and that would be the full opening itself. So your the headers, the sills, the jacks, the kings, and the cripples. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, create a new one. So you're going to see that it's going to be a little bit options over here. We have our create, we have delete, rename, and with our subassembly catalogs, you can import and export these settings. So we're just gonna hit create. It's gonna ask me if I want to save the de default. I'm gonna say yes, I'm gonna name it. I'm gonna hit okay. And by default, they're gonna give you a default option. So what we're gonna do on the bottom here is we're gonna duplicate. Name it. Oops. And you're gonna notice there's gonna be a couple of options here. So first thing, you, what you can do is you can create and place an image just by selecting here. You can rename the subassembly, and we also have a couple of options for naming. So you have your instant name. You also have two other options here. So we have by member schedule. So that's a, another option that we have. It's a different method of scheduling your members. And also we have a positioning tool and it will give an ID and you can get your subassembly to read that information. So for this example, we're going to use instance family and you can also put a description of the subassembly. So I'm just gonna hit close. It's gonna ask you if you wanna save it. I'm gonna say yes. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the different options that you can associate your subassembly catalogs to. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the marker manager. I'm gonna go into the multi-system marker. Perfect. And for this marker, we're gonna use the box header. And you're gonna notice on the bottom here, there's an option to say make subassembly. So by default, we always have the subassemblies selected none. So for this one, we're going to create, we're gonna select the one that we just created. If we go into the sales, you're gonna notice this have the same option there too. So we're gonna hit the pull down, select that subassembly that we just created. And I'm also gonna do the same thing for my kings. Perfect. And with the multi-system, we do have the option for jacks. And again, with the jacks option, you have the option to make a sub-assembly. 
I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to scroll down to our default marker. First one, I'm going to double click. So for the default marker, we have two ways of placing the subassembly. One option that we have, you'll notice here, is I'm going to frame using one header, one sill. I have two jacks on both sides. Oh, sorry, two kings on both sides and one jack. You'll notice on the bottom here, I have the subassembly option. If I hit select, here you can select type of subassembly. So again, I'm going to select that one we just created. And here, this allows you to place your kings and your jacks in the same subassembly. So I'm just going to hit add. So I have all three of them. Hit OK. And I'm also going to do the same thing on the other side. Select my subassembly. Perfect. So by doing it this way, only my jacks and kings are subassemblies. There are two separate subassemblies. We're going to hit OK. And I'm also going to go back into the default one. So I've created another copy of the default one. And you'll notice in the settings here, we have this make into subassembly. So I'm going to have that option checked. And again, this one here is the system subassembly. So now my header, sale, kings on both sides, and also my cripples are all going to be one subassembly. We're going to hit OK. Now, if I go into the wall tab, these are where my stud packs are. I'm going to go into the vertical framing. We have the extra studs, the extra vertical marker. And here, you'll notice on the bottom here, we do have that subassembly option also. So I'm just going to select the same catalog that we just created. I'm going to hit OK. This dialog box will pop up, just stating that we have three existing in the project that's being used. Do I want to update? I'm going to say yes or OK. And I'm going to hit OK. So that's the ones that we have in the markers. Now we're going to go through the panel's property and show you the ones that we have in there. So if we Kind of scroll into this area here. What we're gonna, I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into a floor plan so we can kind of get a little bit better view there. You'll notice that we do have double studs here and they are back to back. So I'm gonna go into this panel's property. I'm gonna go into the miscellaneous tab, into the structural members. And I'm gonna go to the option where we can place the back to back. So there it is. And because we're adding double studs, we also have that option for that sub assembly. I'm going to select it. If we click on the miscellaneous tab here, you're going to notice that we have a couple of options here. We do have that same option that we can double studs for our cripples. And because we are, we're giving the option to double them, you also have the option for a sub assembly. Um, also here, you have that double studs at top slope change. Because we're adding double studs, you have that option there. I'm going to hit OK. And now what's happening is the software is going to put an ID on these members. You'll notice that these members have an orange color. And the reason for that is if I go into my view, into my visibility and graphics, my filter, I have put a filter in that anytime there is a sub assembly ID value to put that color. Because I made my double my back to backs a sub assembly, all my back to backs are that color. I'm just going to scroll scroll to this area here. I'm going to go into this panel's property. I'm going to go back to miscellaneous. And you'll notice here we're going to go into the end studs dialog box. And here, because in the end stud option, we have the option to repeat them, we also have that sub assembly option. So I'm going to double these ones. And then here we again select that 
catalog. Perfect. I'm going to hit OK. And you'll notice <clears throat> our end studs are that same color. Now, if I go back into our plan view and I just scroll where we have those stud packs, if I select the stud pack, you're going to see it's the sub assembly. With this one here, we can modify them through the marker manager or we can hit properties. And we're going to hit this edit over here. And you'll see it's already set. And the reason for that, when we were in the when we were in the marker manager dollar box, it modified them. So we're going to go back into our three D view. We're going to select this member here, and we're going to regenerate this panel. And you're going to notice that I did place these stud packs in three locations in this panel, and you're going to notice that they are going to highlight with the orange color. There they are. If I scroll into the front here, you'll see I have three windows. If I apply a marker to it, you're going to notice that we have that built up one for the default set, uh, default marker. Here I have the system sum assembly. And if I select the last opening, you're going to notice that we have that multi-system one. So what I'm going to do in this case here is I'm going to regenerate this panel. And as soon as it finishes regenerating, you're going to notice that in these two, in the two openings in the end, you're going to notice that our kings, our headers, our sills are going to be the same color, while the one in the middle, it is going to have your cripples, the orange color. It's also almost done. It's a pretty long panel, so it's just taking a little bit more time. Sorry for the delay. So after this finish regenerating, I'm going to show you the option that we have when it comes to custom subassemblies. They work a little bit different than the subassembly for catalogs. With the subassembly, when it comes to the catalogs, I'm going to show you as soon as this finishes that when you select the member here, you're going to notice that MWF does place shared parameters. And there's going to be a shared parameter called subassemblies. When a member does not have a subassembly, it's not going to have an ID there. When it does, you're going to notice that there is going to be an ID. And with that ID, you can filter what you need for it. Put a little delay here. Sorry about this. Perfect. 
So like I was saying just before, let me just bring it to a better view here. So in this one here, we had those built up subassemblies for the default marker. Now, if I do zoom in here and I do select our king, you can see that there is a subassembly. So it will take the panel name and then what subassembly it is. So this is six. If I do select the king on the side, you'll notice it is six also. And if I do tab, you'll notice that <clears throat> even our jack is the same one. If I move over here, this is that system subassembly. You'll see here, again, it's the panel. This is our seventh subassembly. And if I do select, let's say, for example, the sill, you'll notice that it has the same ID here. Perfect. So like I was saying just before, we have custom subassemblies. To apply those, they are going to be under the option slash uh, output slash options. They're going to be the three options here. So what we're going to do is we're going to select these two, two studs. We're going to go into output slash options. We're going to create subassembly. We're going to name it. And we're going to hit OK. And what's going to happen is they're going to automatically turn the color of the subassembly. If we do want to modify it or add additional numbers, we can come in here and add elements to that subassembly. And then here we can modify. So because I've selected an element of that panel, it's going to show us the system subassemblies and also um, the catalogs and also the custom ones. You can see in here. And here are the ones that are not subassembly. So in this case here, this panel has 40 members that are not subassembly. And like I was saying before too, is that with the catalog is when you regenerate a panel, those members keep the subassembly ID. However, the custom ones, as soon as we do regenerate this panel, what's going to happen is that these two members are going to go back to its original color and if I do select any of them, you'll notice that there is no, you know, BIMSF subassembly ID. If I do, let's say undo the change I just did, select him, you can see that there's a BIMSF ID with a unique name. Um, again, this is a post-processing. So as soon as you regenerate it, you will lose that information. You can see there. Perfect. So that's all I'm going to be showing you guys today about the subassemblies. Tanya? Awesome. Thank you, Marilyn. So that looks like that's a wrap for today. For any of the questions that came through uh, the chat, we'll make sure to get to them by email as soon as possible. Usually take about 24 hours. Um, I'd just like to remind everyone that the recording of the presentation will be sent through shortly. As always, please feel free to share the recording with any colleagues. And if you'd like to set up a one-on-one -on -one demonstration or if you have any follow-up questions after the session has ended, please feel free to reach out to our team. Our contact details will be provided along with the recording. All right. So. Uh, we'll now be ending the webinar. I just want to say a big thank you to Marilyn and also thank you to everyone who registered and attended. Have a great day. Thank you guys. Have a nice day.